Well, as someone who needed no introduction, I'm now introducing three people who need no introduction. You're all supposed to have read your books, so I won't go through the detail other than to quickly say that Carolyn Warren, of course, uh, recently was here at the BAMP Center uh, getting everything in shape before she headed on to her new responsibilities. And we have, of course, with us as well, Simon Bro, head of the Canada Council, who has been, I think, at virtually every art summit that, <laughs> that I'm aware of. Previously was head of the National Theatre School and has always been a force in Quebec and Montreal for everything artistic. Kate Cornell, sort of as dance, 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 as well as being co-chair of the coalition. So we've got three folks steeped in the arts and uh, the Canada Council uh, work that Simon has been a part of. He will expand on what he said yesterday, so we look forward to their comments. So on to you, panel. Thank you so much, Jim. Good morning, everyone, and good morning to the live stream. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here to talk to Simone and, and Carolyn. Um, I wanted to begin by saying thank you. We, as the art sector, see how hard the Canada Council is working, how hard your staff is working, your directors. Uh, I want to say thank you for your boldness and for your vision of change. So join me in saying thank you. Uh, so I wanted to begin uh, this year, uh, the, the first year of the new funding model, um, and we saw the results of the core clients in February. Uh, the priorities that the Council clearly indicated were historical inequities and new clients. So I was wondering, Simon, if you could characterize those priorities and maybe talk about some of the new clients you're excited about. Okay, so I, first of all, I thank you for noticing the, the hard hard work that has been done at Canada Council, I, it, has been a, it has been really a tough year uh, for, for the staff, for Caroline's team. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been also a very demanding year for the, the art sector because there was a lot of expectations, a lot of hope, a lot of uh, concerns and anxiety. Uh, it has been a huge job for the hundreds of jurors who came to the Canada Council to assess every organization applying to the Canada Council. But uh, we, we need to see now that uh, it has been an incredibly uh, immense collective effort. But in fact, we invested this year almost $60 million of new funds to support the arts in this country. And that did not happen for decades. And we succeeded to get the money out of the door and changed, we, we started to change the landscape. And the new uh, clients, you know, we this year support 1,154 uh, 1, core funded clients. Out of them, there are 110 who are for the first time recipients of core funding of the Canada Council. And we favored first and foremost for those new clients to core indigenous groups, and we also favored equity-seeking groups, deaf and disability, uh, minority language across Canada. So we have this 110 new organizations who entered in the, the world of core funding at Canada Council <coughs> at a level that, w that, they could not have dream that we could not have dreamed of before. So they entered at a decent level not that 5,000 and then mm -hmm. you survive and, you know. And that, is, that will change. Uh, we, we won't see it next year, but that will change the future of the, uh, the sector because you have now players, permanent players that are in the ecosystem across Canada, including the North, that have now more capacity to play their role. And we're very, very excited because uh, a lot of them have been there for years and years, have been mm -hmm. supported through yeah. projects at Canada Council, have been supported in, in kind of a separate program for uh, equity-seeking groups, and now they are in the mainstream, and that was the idea. Mm. Obviously, it's obvious that you know, when you do something like that, it means that you give priority. We gave priority to indigenous group. We gave priority to diversity this year. So it means that other 
institutions and groups will have to wait a little longer before seeing you know, uh, an increase. And that's the, the reality. If you want to, ch to, to shift the landscape, if, we, if you want to walk the talk, you need to be bold, you need to make decisions like that. Nevertheless, it's important to notice that approximately up to that two out of three core funded organizations in this country got a raise and sometimes a significant raise. Mm -hmm. So it, there is 34% of the organization who still were not at the level or there was not enough money to invest this year and we will complete that reinvestment uh, this year in 2017, 18, 18, 19 and the year after. So we are still on a reinvestment mode. And I think in terms of, of new clients, where the real news is, and this, this is not something you see with the results of CORE, is project funding. Mm -hmm. We will start the year this year, the year this year, with 110 million in the bank that is not committed to anyone at the beginning of the year, this year now, for project funding. And that is so important. You know, I, I keep thinking about, you know, the last interviews Leonard Cohen gave before dying, reminding us that his first Canada Council grant changed his life. Mm -hmm. It changed our emotional life. It impacted millions of people. And I think that more and more, and I see that on social media every day, the people who are getting now the letter from the Canada Council because they can write their book, they can work on their poems, they can do theater, they can advance. I mean, the, the injection right now in, in, in project funding at the Canada Council is the highest ever, and it will climb continually for the next uh, three years. And that will change the reality for, you, for the organizations too because you will have artists who will have capacity to create, develop, n m uh, be, be, express voices that are very marginal at the moment, and these artists and these group of artists are your future mm -hmm. as institutions and organizations. Institutions don't need to be always the incubator of the new work. The incubation could be done anywhere, and it's the case more and more in the digital world, and it's the case in a, in a vast territory like Canada. The Canada Council will, in 2021, half, uh, will have half of its budget devoted to, to project. If it, in an ideal world, we would have more than that because I think we need renewal, we need to hear new voices, we need a power dynamics to change, we need to, to, to make sure, and those, there's a lot of people you don't know yet who received that money because we succeeded this year and last year to honor the commitment of 25% of all the new money we have to first-time recipients at the Canada Council. And, 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 I, and I'm just, I'm, I'm seeing, if you know artists, you know, if you know group of artists who have projects, tell them to apply to the Canada Council because there is money and we had a success rate of 50% this year, oh, wow. so it means one project out of two, which is fantastic, incredible, that did not happen for years. So those changes in terms of diversity, new players, new artists, new distribution of money in, in Canada, this may not be visible when for you the Canada Council is a budget line, mm -hmm. but in reality it's a profound, positive, and collective success of the art sector. So that's my first answer. It's an exciting time. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so, Carolyn, I wanted to talk about the digital fund. Uh, the results were released on the, the first round of, of projects that were successful um, last week. And I think it's fair to say there's still a little bit of confusion uh, in the community about the, the priorities of the digital fund and how the role of collaboration uh, plays in the digital mm -hmm. fund. I am very excited about um, a, a su successful project with uh, Culture Creates and Canadian Stage looking at the semantic web. I'm wondering if you could just talk, uh, explain the priorities of the digital fund and, and maybe talk about clients you're excited about. So good morning everyone and everyone online. Um, 
I think it would be fair to say that uh, one of the reasons I actually came to the Canada Council, uh, apart from a, a, a shared belief in um, the kinds of priorities that Simon is talking about, uh, is the, um, the absolute focus on digital that, uh, that, that the Council has at the moment. Um, and I think it would, there are two things I want to start by saying. One is thank you for everyone in the room who applied. Um, I think this is the first year for us with the fund, and we are also uh, figuring out on our feet and uh, iterating as we go what the fund needs to do and needs to be in, in order to best support the sector. Um, I think it's, the word digital itself has, uh, has, has been somehow, um, I think it means different things to different people. So one of the things that I personally find very helpful is to think about social media, mobile, the web, analytics, and big data. In other words, for a creative industry, for the cultural sector, we tend to think of arts uh, and digital in terms of creation, you know, putting technology in the hands of artists, which I do passionately believe in. And by the way, I would, would look forward to many more project grants um, that involved t digital technologies, because one of the other things uh, Simon um, didn't mention in, in his remarks to date is that the, uh, the cap on our project funds has also been significantly increased. Yeah. And knowing that working with digital technology is difficult and challenging for artists because of the costs, I would really encourage you to be looking at that project funding for creation projects in digital. Mm -hmm. The idea behind the Council's Digital Fund, however, is not creation because we have programs, in, including, of course, Explore and Create, that are specifically designed to fund those kinds of creation projects. The fund itself wanted to take a much broader look at how we could support the, uh, the sector moving through what really is a, a radical transformation in our, in our current digital era. And, um, when you think about the ways in which social media, all things mobile, you all have your phones with you, the web in all its many forms, um, and the use of algorithms in, cha in really changing the way we live our lives, um, what's happened is that we have created a uh, highly connected group of um, consumers of all kinds of content, uh, which of course includes artistic content and many other kinds. Um, and also, interestingly enough, a fragmentation of our, um, of our cultural consumers, for example, because we have, as we see uh, in the online world, people find their, their niche communities of others with similar interests to them. But the notion of community and belonging is absolutely intrinsic to the digital reality as it is, and there was some discussion yesterday, as it is to um, traditional consumers of, of culture who are looking for a social aspect to a sense of community and belonging. So just to pull back then, when we launched the fund, we had just finished a summit in 2017 that really brought together players from the arts sector and a number of people from other sectors including technology and creative industries, uh, universities, to see if we could um, galvanize, I think might be the right word, the sector and create a sort of a, a sense of the urgency of dealing with the new realities that we're, we're existing in. There was also a survey, and I suspect many of you in the room participated in the survey, or certainly your staff would have done. Uh, we talked, we, we, con we connected with 900 organizations and over 1,000 individual artists. We basically asked them, where are you at with digital? What do you understand by it? What are your needs in this space? And what came back to us was this sort of overarching um, lack of understanding of the opportunities and challenges that are, are posed by, by the new digital reality. And this, by the way, is absolutely not um, a Canadian phenomenon. We see it across mm -hmm. Europe. We see it elsewhere in the world that the cultural sector uh, there is a lag in terms of understanding what this new digital environment is and how, how you can find your feet in it. So the fund was designed to help, the, the very first part of the fund when we talk about priorities was to 
was to help this group and individuals um, better understand what digital means. And that, that isn't a particularly um, you know, exciting um, <laughs> proposition because it involves activities that can be as simple as organizing as groups to bring expertise in to consult and to learn about what the digital environment could mean for you. And uh, as you will see in some of the successful projects that will be um, posted soon on, online that there are many of them that are literally that simple. Um, but one of the key principles of the fund, and I think there's an underlying idea behind it, is that we, we're asking that you collaborate in your, um, in your applications to the fund, that you work with other organizations and individuals, and, and frankly, that you reach outside of your immediate um, knowledge base, whether it's your organization or even within the sector, to seek input from the sectors around us that have, um, that have knowledge that we don't in this digital space. And I think one of the big challenges that I've encountered, and I've heard it from many of you and many other inquiries that have come to me, is, well, how do we find those people? Because in our sector, we aren't used to interacting with, for example, a lot of the major players in the creative industries. And um, so one of the things that we're looking at now, and I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in a minute, is new approaches to help you, even at the di di this what we're calling digital literacy stage, which is what is digital, how can this help me, what are the tools that I need in my sector, my organization, this ecosystem that I'm living and working in, um, and then how can I adapt them, how can I implement them, what are the strategic approaches that I can take to, uh, to move whether it's an individual or again an organization, into this new digital reality. So it's called digital literacy, and that is, when you're looking at those priorities, that is that first component on, on the website. Um, the, second, the second component that I think is, um, won't be a surprise uh, in, in, to any of you, I guess you would, you would say it's discoverability writ large. Mm -hmm. In other words, in a world where the, 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 our cultural consumers are absolutely bombarded with content of all kinds from all sorts of sources. How do you, in the art sector, how is your work, how is the artistic work that you're doing find itself an audience? How, do you, how are you going to be discovered by these, uh, this new generation of individuals who are distracted and who <laughs> have lots and lots and lots of options? And um, so discoverability can take, um, can take many, many forms. And again, the request from the fund was get together with others in your sector to think about what that means and how you can begin to engage with, um, with new audiences. Um, the third area that we have asked um, asked you to think about is organizational transformation in a digital reality, which means uh, how are you doing the work that you're doing in your organizations? And one of the things that we see, um, you know, there, the model, the hierarchical leadership model that, that has served us so well in the industrial age actually isn't as effective in the digital world, where the sort of networking and collaborations and are, are really required to, 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 to get the work done. And the fund is looking to the sector to say, we'd actually like to move our business model. We'd like to try some new ideas in how we organize and how we transform our internal processes, not simply digitize things that we're doing in a linear fashion now, you know, the, you know, taking analog and just reproducing it in digital, but actually literally rethinking the mm -hmm. way that um, the work is getting done in the organization. Just that kind of thinking we know takes capacity that many organizations don't have, and hence the fund is trying to offer you a support mechanism. One of the things um, I, I think I was chatting with Rémi Lorty, my colleague who's here in the room, maybe you can put your hand up, he's our, <laughs> one of our digital officers, and we were talking yesterday as I, I, I've heard from many people, um, you know, how, how do we, in fact, one of my, one of the quotes that stuck with me this year uh, was uh, ahead of one of our national arts organizations who stood up in a room and said, we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, I think 
this is, in a sense, where we are the fund. We, we discovered as we went through the year and we have tried as much as possible to communicate and open a dialogue with you to discuss the possible questions you need to be asking. Um, we're, we're trying to help you, in a sense, formulate the questions as much as find the solutions because that's where we have to start. Um, is what do you need and what does that look like in a digital context? What's available to you in terms of digital tools and strategies to, to move you forward? And, and I do think the big, one of the big findings, and I, I, I repeat myself, is that the knowledge isn't in all in this room. It really does lie in sectors beyond ours, but collaborating with teams within this space to make sure that the benefits of these cross-sectoral partnerships rest with the arts sector is really the way to go. So one of the things we're trying to do now for this year, and we are moving, and you, your feedback is absolutely critical to us in thinking about our next, our next deadline. But we have learned that we need to actually accompany the sector more uh, proactively than we, than we do with our other granting programs. So we are going to establish a kind of a learning network, which is also a mentoring network for our successful applicants in the first round and also for some of the unsuccessful applicants that our juries identified as having a particular potential. We're also looking to set up um, some kind of matchmaking between players in other industries such as the technology industry or the creative industries um, who would be willing to work with the art sector on projects and proposals for the fund. And that's something we hope to have in place yeah. by sometime early summer. Those are two of the, the very uh, specific ways in which we are trying to, to, to help move you forward by offering you better entry points, I think might be a good way to, to put it, to, to establish the kind of collaborations that, um, that we're looking for. Thank you, Carolyn. Is that helpful? Yes, very helpful. Um, and when is the next deadline for the digital fund? Has that been established yet or not? I decided? think currently it's in September, but okay. to be honest with you, I'm, I'm looking at moving that back because I want to give people the maximum time possible and to give our teams more time Great. to do the kind of outreach and answer the questions that you have. And, and uh, just to say that uh, the er in the early days of May, and, and we never do that. Not only we will release the list of the project that we supported, but with a description oh, of each project nice. for the community to have a, a, a more uh, clear idea of what, what is a blockchain project in Saguenay or in Vancouver and, and mm -hmm. a description of it. So we, and we also, it's important to realize that w you will learn that we uh, did not invest the full amount this year. We had $10 million to invest and we invested 6.8, I guess. Mm. The rest is, is, is there for next year, so we did ah. not do something else with it. Uh, so to, to make sure that we would support projects that have real capacity, because we know, we understand that the community will look at those projects and it, and it will have an influence on the future of that fund. So there were many projects that were not at the maturity level they should be, so those projects may be reworked. You may find other partners, and you will come back. And the last thing I want to say is, is this is a fund, because this is not a, per a permanent program at council. We imagine that fund for four years uh, as a transition fund. Uh, so we will figure out probably, you know, the last year, you know, what we do. Is it still needed? Can we only, you know... Uh, count on you know the, the the natural and organic way of dealing with it do we have other priorities in terms of transitioning the mm -hmm, sector mm -hmm. but we feel that to keep 10 percent more or less of the entire uh, granting budget of the council to help the sector to transition and adapt to new realities no matter what they are uh, is something needed this time we feel it's digital but you know again maybe 10 years from now, it will be how do we deal with all the climate refugees that will be in Canada or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. so, so we want to make sure that we will have that capacity to transition from a state to another. Yeah, the flexibility. Yep. Can I just add one last of course. thing? <laughs> when we're talking about some of the new mechanisms we want to make available to you um, for the next round, we're really looking to find a way to give you small amounts of development money that are um, 
short-term turnaround. One of the things we did notice, and I completely understand the instinct to apply for a $500,000 grant because you know that it, the money is available, but in many cases, the best way to approach the fund is through multiple phases of development. Mm. And, if, and we tried, I think, to make that clear on the website, but I don't think it was largely understood. So we will look to put in some mechanisms that allow for a smaller grant that would give you capacity to bring some experts in, look to communicate with partners, bring them together, workshop an idea, put it forward, and then move for a second application to move the project forward. I think that the notion of iteration is really critical to the fund, and we're, we're trying to help you do that by creating some mechanisms that make it possible. So, Simon, you've already referenced that the doubling of the budget of the Canada Council will be realized in 2021, and that is thanks to a, a lot of the advocates in this room from the Canadian Arts Summit and <coughs> from the Canadian Arts Coalition. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Engage and Sustain uh, a program because clients in that program will be applying again for core funding this fall. Um, you were just talking about priorities. Uh, will the priorities remain the same or will, will there be new added priorities in equity, diversity and inclusion? Could you talk a little bit about that, that uh, program? Yes. So, so this fall, the clients that will apply are the, the, the smallest portion of the Engage and Sustain. So it's the institution. Uh, and uh, there are other core funding, uh, funded organizations that will apply at the same time, and that's the artist-driven organizations. So the, the vast majority of the core funded clients are in the category of catalysts, and they will reapply only the year after. So, so we, didn't, we won't change our priorities. The priorities okay. we set uh, are there for five years. So they are there till we are in 2021. What is a very important to understand is that, we, again, we are in, in moments of reinvestment because they're, they're in terms of core funding because there is new money. So we did a portion of it, roughly 20%, 40 uh, percent uh, of the 55 percent. So roughly 20 percent is, is what we, we invested, 20 percent more. This is what we invested in institutions this year. And, and we committed that uh, the total raise would be 55%. So there's still money to be reinvested for institutions and all the other organizations. So we, we don't change the priorities at all. But obviously, uh, because, because we are in a logic of reinvestment, we will take into account the, the investment we just did. Because, you know, if we awarded, I don't know, half a, billion, half a million dollar to an organization, it's obvious that eight months after, you don't know what the impact is. Mm -hmm. So we will, take care, we, will, we will take that into consideration in the way we will reinvest. But the same priorities in terms of artistic leadership, in terms of uh, reflecting diversity, in terms of uh, uh, advancing reconciliation, in terms of uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, gender parity, I mean, all those priorities remain. remain. They okay. absolutely remain. <coughs> so we're not shifting at all priorities and we won't uh, because it's, it is very complex to achieve. It takes time. It takes investment. It takes a lot of discussions in the art sector to make all those adjustments. Right. So we, we won't be changing constantly. And, um, and, I, and I just want to say that it's really, really important to understand when you apply to the Canada Council that saying that you need more money is absolutely useless for us. <laughs> the juries in the room are not looking, you know, if you have needs. What they are looking for is, you know, what, do, what would you do if you would get more money? What are your ideas? What are your intentions? Mm -hmm. What is it that you try to change in the trajectory of your organizations, in your community, in your artistic discipline, in your relationship to society? What is it that you are trying to do? And this is what needs to be uh, said to the jury, and this is what is debated. So it's not because you, you feel that, you know, I have to apply because I need money. Everybody needs money mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, this is not the point. The point is really what do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. Be clear. Being bold doesn't mean asking $50 million. Mm -hmm. Being bold means having bold ideas and bold projects and demonstrate to the jury that 
if there's a, a new investment made in your organization, it will have a transformative impact and it will advance the values that the Canada Council and all of us are fighting for in terms of giving a more central place to the arts and society and in terms of, of advancing uh, the, 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 the sharing uh, uh, of the arts with uh, the Canadian population and our presence on the world stage. So this is what you have to talk about in your grant application. Not money, formula. I mean, you're not, you're, you're not talking to accountants. You're <laughs> talking to your peers. You're talking to people who try to see how ad to advance the future of, uh, of the arts in this country. So I think it's, it's, it's where we are. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, we will still, uh, uh, the foundation of all, of all our decisions are peer assessment. And I think it's really important to read carefully uh, what we published after all the ads that were made on how we make our funding decisions at Canada Council. Mm -hmm. That text that is on the website describes exactly how it works now at Council and why, what is a funda foundational uh, ranking by mm -hmm. the, the, the peers and then how we decide the amounts and for what and how we are uh, reporting on that. So it's really important to, to look at that. And the reason why when I came here uh, yesterday or the day before I gave a lot of numbers is because I know that you won't get the annual report of the council before you will craft your application. So this is why we, we told you exactly where we are and what to expect in the next round and the, and, and the round after. And this time uh, for the institutions and the uh, it's for four years. So it's a really important moment. And I, and I urge all the artistic directors and the CEOs and the board to read their grant application before sending us yeah. and, and, and ask themselves, is it a strong case for my organization to get more public money in that context? Yeah. Is it strong enough? Is it compelling enough? Is it poignant enough if you are a jury member? And again, it's not about needs. It's about contribution you can make to your art form, to society, to your community. Thank you. Um, I have one more question, and then I will open it uh, to the floor for, for questions from the floor. So my last question, Carolyn, is, uh, is about creating safer, more respectful spaces for women, indigenous people, black and, and people of color in, uh, in the arts community. Uh, this is an issue that, that many of us have been working on. Um, I, along with other advocates, have been talking to MPs and to senators, and I'm very excited that the Standing Committee for Canadian Heritage is studi studying gender parity. So in January, the Canada Council uh, said it was looking at its priorities, and I was wondering if you could give us an update uh, on that. Sure. Well, I think uh, our thinking started, as I'm sure all of yours did, back in the fall of 2017 in the wave of allegations about uh, harassment and sexual misconduct that were uh, in our lives in the news every day. And of course, um, we experienced here in Canada in January uh, a very important and high profile case of uh, allegations of sexual harassment. So the, the Canada Council began its thinking quite some time ago, and in early January, um, we decided to take a very public position mm -hmm. um, saying that we had absolutely, you know, would not tolerate in any, any form um, harassment and sexual misconduct in any workplace, uh, just to be really clear. Um, but we also promised that we were going to do a, uh, a very deep um, rethinking of our policies and our internal documents and also our own internal mm -hmm. um, in workplace integrity um, policies and so on. I mean, given the conversation yesterday and some very very um, compelling thoughts about, you know, what, what's the actual impact of a policy. I have to say to you that we fully, fully recognize that changing and updating your policies is not the same thing as shifting the culture. Yeah. And that this for us is the beginning of a lot of work yeah. and a lot of very complex thought that needs to be undertaken, of course, not only at the council, but um, in the community overall. And what we want to do, we wanted to establish a leadership position so that we can accompany the sector through what will have to be some tough yes. work ahead uh, in tackling this issue. But in terms of policies, yes, we did, we have updated um, all of the policies that we currently work with internally at council with respect 
to our applicants. And we've also updated a document called the uh, Grant Acknowledgement Form, which any successful applicant must sign when they receive money from the Canada Council, uh, whether they're an individual or an organization. And in that Grant Acknowledgement Form, uh, which binds the recipient to certain conditions, we do ask that you um, assure workplace safety and uh, integrity. Um, and of course, that is, you know, we're not, we're not a police force and we're not a justice system, and this is not our intention, but mm. we do want to make it clear that uh, for the council, this is, a, this is a commitment that we have to uh, working with the sector to deal with some of these really pressing issues. Um, we have, I will say, we've had several incidents that have come to us in council, specific cases where an applicant, an individual, or an organization has had allegations made against them. And uh, in each and every case, we look at it uh, very carefully and from, uh, you know, with, with our, our particular policy instrument, we make as fair um, an evaluation as possible about whether we need to put an organization on a concerned status um, or whether we need to have a more major warning for an organization. But again, as I say, when we, when we use these instruments, we are also not, we are not in any way intending to become a police force that then tries to, uh, you know, try to, tries to enforce um, the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I, I, I think more deeply, um, and we, you, there will be an, an announcement actually in the, in the next couple of days um, about one of the ways in which we're hoping to accompany the, uh, the sector through, through the changes that will have to be made because again, they will demand capacity, particularly within organizations and with small organizations, mm. and we hear this from the National Arts um, service organizations, it's very difficult yeah. to try to find the time and the space and to have the, the, the legal and other resources to really put these kinds of frameworks in place. Uh, but the commitment is there and um, we're, we're tackling it on these three different levels, including, as I say, our own internal workplace um, guidelines. That's wonderful, and, and I appreciate the Canada Council's leadership as, as a public funder because I know other funders are talking about this as well. And, and, and one thing I, I, I want to say, because I've been, I've been on the board of the Canada Council for 10 years before um, being the CEO, and uh, the board of the Council changed recently, so the, the vast majority mm -hmm. of the board members uh, are new, a lot of artists, a lot of people you know, like Jesse Wenty, mm -hmm. who spoke here, Jennifer, uh, yeah, yeah. Jennifer uh, a, a lot of very, uh, and since they, they came to the board, all the questions around sexual harassment, around uh, gender parity, LGBTQ, uh, 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 equality, I mean, all these questions, the public responsibility of public funding are front and center at the board level of the Canada Council, mm -hmm. not only internally, mm -hmm. but at the board level. Mm -hmm. And it, this is new. And this is very interesting, and I feel that this board is kind of a now uh, reflecting what we see in society, mm -hmm. and, and constantly what we're trying to do is, you know, we, we, it's this question of, you know, how do we play with, with rules, with decisions, and with pushing for change of culture, and it's clear that cultural changes need also that we do invest and make radical decisions to make sure that the new voices that we need at all the tables are there. And this is one of the reasons why we started at the Canada Council by putting the, the big money and invest first and foremost where there was so much to accomplish in terms of giving new space and new voices. And because this is what, what was urgent. And I know again that for some people it's frustrating, but I'm, I am absolutely convinced that this is where the future lies yeah. for all of us. Thank you. So now it's your opportunity to ask questions uh, of Carolyn and Simone. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'm just curious about, um, it's great that there's an opportunity for equity seeking groups that fall within the, the priority groups um, to apply for funding. I'm just curious, how are they assessed during the um, peer assessment process? Like, how are their jury members 
prepared to review them in the appropriate context? Uh, or do they go to a completely separate jury that's, you know, focused on equity? Um, and is there still an equity office at Canada Council for the Arts? So the way, the way it works is that except for the indigenous, uh, for CKS, the indigenous program where it's clearly indigenous juries and, and it's really kind of a, a indigenous values and, 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 and it's completely different uh, approach, and again, it's not all the indigenous organizations or artists that need to apply to that program. They can apply any, but if they decide that they, they want to be supported in the context of the indigenous program, this will be the reality from staff to, I mean, it's informed by self-determination and, 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 and a sort of self-governance. And it's profoundly impacted by the commitment of the Canada Council to decolonize itself and to learn to decolonize itself. In terms of, of all the other issues related to equity and equity seeking and diversity and all of that, the decision we made, and that was like the big announcement of the strategic plan, was to put that question not as a marginal separate uh, pathway, but bring it front and center. So it meant for us that we, we, we decided that, and, and, and that is not new, but it, it's even more systematic right now, to make sure that in the making of the juror, juries, so the, the peer assessment committee, and we had hundreds of them this year, uh, we, we made sure that there was fair representation of all the equity seek, seeking groups to make sure that they would be at the table. Uh, we made sure that uh, the criteria for assessment, especially for uh, large organizations and organizations with a certain size, that it was part of, it's not only a wish that we hope that, uh, that, that the diversity will be respected, but it's a criteria uh, that, that has weight in the decision of, of ranking and eventually funding an organization. How do you reflect the diversity of our society in, in all its complexity and its nuanced at the, at the level of your workforce, board, programming, and all of that. And there's a lot of work to do there. And, and we, we do have, we still have at council people and, 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 and officers and, and professionals uh, spe specialized in, in all those questions of equity and all of that. They are there to help uh, the uh, granting division and, and the entire council to make sure that the Canada Council remains at the forefront in terms of policy, in terms of reflection, in terms of action, to make sure that we're advancing it. It is a huge uh, task. It won't be accomplished uh, overnight. Mm. But uh, I, I do hope that uh, everybody in Canada more and more, and uh, including the Canadian citizens, will push and, and will ask public funding to honor mm -hmm. the advancement of diversity and social justice and, you know, and, and, and all those values, uh, equity, uh, uh, safe workplace. I mean, because we have a role to do. If we were a private funder, I mean, we would be in a different situation. But I think now in 2018, you cannot imagine, you know, a public funder who would say we don't care about public values. Mm -hmm. We do care. We're not a political party, but we take side, and we take side for all the most fragile uh, portion of our citizens, and we make sure that uh, when we fund that, especially when we give core funding, that the, everybody is committing efforts and energy to advance that. Great question. Thank you for the question. <laughs> Other questions? Frederic? Oh. The government's investment in the Canada Council for the Arts is unprecedented. Uh, this isn't something that we've seen for a long time. So how can we make sure that the government sees a return on this investment today and in the future as a wise and sound decision? It's sorry that we'll make our lives as arts advocates easier in convincing the government to make further investments? C'est une très bonne question parce que c'est la configuration. It's a great question because the, given the alignment of stars and planets is, has been such that such an investment was made possible 
and unprecedented. It wouldn't have happened under previous governments. It's really come um, at a pivotal point when there has been a new election uh, and there's been a very strong commitment made. Uh, in fact, uh, it was 11 o'clock in the morning in Montreal when uh, the Prime Minister said that the uh, budget for the Ca Canada Council for the Arts would be doubled. We knew that we were entering a historical era. Be and, 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 and I know, you know, uh, I know <laughs> every day we, they, they are, we are under pressure at Canada Council to change our priorities, to change our commitments, to change the decision. N not from the government, the go we are completely at, uh, at arm's length, but from the sector. And, and my view is that the only way for the Canada Council to protect its investments and the, the, that investment for the future, and eventually to, to, to argue for more attention and more influence and all of that, is that we have to deliver what we committed. Because when we made the commitments we made in the, in the strategic plan around indigenous, around international, around youth, this is a very high priority, as you know, uh, on, on, on the, for the Canadian society right now. When we made those commitments and we aligned and we said very clearly, this is where the money will go. It has to go there dollar for dollar. Who will get the money is not the question, but the money needs to be spent that way. And we made very precise commitment. And if we cannot honor those commitments, if we don't deliver that, nobody will trust the council anymore. And it's very different from where we were in the past, because in the past we had 146 program. You would put money into the Canada Council, but did they produce exactly? Nobody knew. I, even as the CEO of the council, when I came, you know, it took me months before finding exactly what, what do we really spend in an international health council. There were like 10 different definitions. It was, now we see very clearly, you know, this is what, what has been spent for, our, for creation. This is what has been spent for institution. This is what we did for international, for co-production. I mean, we see that, and we can give you, you will see the map in the next annual report for the first time. You will be amazed, you know, where we are. And, 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 and we will kind of understand, you know, what, what are public investment doing for the arts. So we need to deliver that. We need to be able to tell the story in a more compelling way combining facts, and we will have facts because we are do investing heavily right now in tracking, in, uh, in, in tracking deliverables by the council. This is not for nothing that we know all those numbers by heart. You know, we're following that every day. We are also, uh, we also commissioned a huge project research. You probably heard about that, about qualitative impact of the investment. Mm. It's, it's one of the biggest projects ever uh, undertook by the Canada Council and many different partners to demonstrate results. So we want to be able, we know that in 2021 we won't have all the impact because it's soon, but I will give you just a simple example. We were all under shock two days ago when the when a report that we worked with PCH was released and we realized that again that the salaries in the artistic sector declined by 1%. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting because those numbers are, were, are the year before we started reinvestment. So we have a baseline. We will know, for instance, you know, in five years after half a billion of investment, did we you know, improve that? Yes or no? I hope we will. But we have a baseline. We have a baseline where we were in 15, 16. And so this is what we're doing. When I came to the council, there was no baseline. You know. Yes, we need more money. but how much and what is the demand and where and you know even when we promised that we would get 25 percent to the youth you know young people we realized well we don't have the demand coming from the council so measuring reporting honoring our commitment and really uh, obviously for the artistic community it really means again you know being able to demonstrate what is the impact of the the new grants you got and, 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 and we need to track that. We mm. need to have those stories. And, and, and frankly, it's really important. And you know, I'm on the board of the uh, International Federation of Arts Council. We are the only one in the world with that level of investment, the only one mm. in the world right now. Everybody's watching Canada, and everybody's watching if, was it a wise decision to do that investment? 
And my obsession, and, my, and the obsession of Carolyn and all my team, is to be able to demonstrate that it was not only wise, it was bold, it was needed, and it will change the landscape of this country, not only for the artists, but for the people living in this country in terms of being able to build an inclusive society. So that's our commitment, and it, it's something we need to share. And yes, you know, I hear about, you know, oh, I did not get the grant and all of that. But frankly, on a daily basis, I hear more positive stories already. I see more positive results uh, today than uh, people disappointed because they did not get what they, was, they were expecting. Mm -hmm. I think it will come because the money is there, but I think we need to make sure that we still support the quest for excellence and that we still support the quest for more social impact. And if we don't support it, if we're not rigorous in our decision process and in our investment and all of that, we will be in a terrible position because after a half a billion investment, going back to any government to say we, we want more without being able to, able to demonstrate what, was, what happened with the last reinvestment of that nature would, be, would, would, would mortgage any argument for any advocacy argument. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge responsibility and in fact, it's more work to have money than not to have money <laughs> if you are a funder. It's a huge responsibility because you won't have the argument that we did not have money. Scarcity is a, is a terrible state to be in, but when you are in a situation of scarcity, nobody expects anything from you. When, when you have all the money that has been invested, you know, the big money that has, has been invested, you know, by the federal government, you know, there's no money at PCH right now. All the money is at Canada Council and CBC. So I won't talk about CBC, but for Canada <laughs> Council, it, it, it's major. I mean, if we cannot demonstrate that we achieved something powerful, uh, we're done. We're all done, not mm. the Canada Council. All of us, we're done. So this is where we are. Right. And it's exciting, but it's, uh, it's a big pressure. Yes, and you've already made reference to, I, I see a lot of individual artists, uh, um, Celebrating on Twitter the yep. the project grants that they've not the organization received. so much I, I but the individual. I just could encourage yeah. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that we need to share our, our, our stories more, and and I'm I'm so excited to see uh, the data that's been made available, particularly to service organizations yeah. uh, like the one that I work for, and and the research that's being. Um, yeah. And there's more to come when you will have the the, the next time we publish all the data. <coughs> on project grants, it will be fascinating for you because you can know in your region, you know, what happened. Yeah. What is the level of research creation? What is the level of experimentation? Mm -hmm. And, 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 and it, it is a fascinating story because it's not even across the country. And there are uh, places in the country, you know, we talked about Alberta the other day about institutions, you know, who had a tough time this time in, in their round of education. But at the same time, Alberta has an 83% raise in project grant, the highest in the country. And it's the youngest artist in the country who got the money and the most diverse in terms of indigenous and all that. So this is like, this is another mm. vision of, you know, what is happening in Alberta that we had before. And it was impossible before to know that because we were in, 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 a, in a funding model where it was all about more theater, more dance and all of that. And not knowing what are the outcomes mm. of our investment. Now it is crystal clear. So I think it's, uh, but because it's crystal clear, we need to have a good impact <laughs> because everybody will see that we failed if we fail. Mm. Question in the back there. I don't have a question, more of a comment. I wanted to pick up on what Carolyn mentioned around the importance of collaboration for the Digital Strategy Fund. I just wanted to bring to the attention of the the room that the uh, government in 2017 announced 1.26 billion for what's called the Strategic Innovation Fund. This is administered through the Innovation Science and Economic Development Department. There's a screen that allows for not-for-profit organizations to partner and collaborate with academia, colleges, universities, as well as the for-profit. So Carolyn's point about trying to reach out into other sectors, particularly technology, you do have a complementary support system as well through the Department of ICED, and uh, I would encourage you to look at what's called stream number four to be able to basically also see how you can leverage the Digital Strategy Fund 
and then look at maybe more broader sector-wide strategies that sort of integrate with the priorities of bigger um, technology companies. So I just wanted to sort of say that I think seeing what's coming out of the Digital Strategy Fund is just as important as well with regard to innovation and to Simone's point about experimentation, which are two key priorities of the government, and they believe in those investments in those areas. So uh, we look forward to seeing what the results are from, from both sides. So there's a lot of money in the system, and it's a question of just knowing how to leverage both pieces. So thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Thank Ramsey, you. And, and for those on the live stream, that, that's uh, Ramsey Saad uh, from the Department of Canadian Heritage, uh, and that's wonderful advice. Thank you for sharing. Sorry, you want to say more? No, no I was just okay. going to say thank you. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another question. Yes, Sarah there. Good morning. Um, I wanted to, <clears throat> so I wanted to build a little bit on um, Simone's conversation about, you know, what happens next. Um, and maybe build a bit of a parallel from my experience in the university sector. Um, I sit on a part of our university's association that has a very front-facing relationship with government in terms of negotiating for big money for research. Um, and our university's associations um, had tended to not be able to find a unifying position <clears throat> on what we wanted and the amount of money and what we wanted the money for. Um, we convinced a minister to commission something called the Naylor Report, which looked at reinvestment in fundamental research. And for the first time, really, universities really, really pulled together and supported um, the recommendations of that document. And uh, we have, uh, like the cultural sector, um, been fortunate in receiving billions of dollars of funding. And what we did was um, very consciously decide um, and convince our faculty, and this is not an easy thing, um, to support that distribution of money over the years and to be able to work, in a sense, behind the scenes with government to refine how that money flowed. And I guess um, part of my message here is to really urge the cultural sector to work very closely with the council and with Heritage um, to refine how the money flows and to um, think carefully about um, writing the minister, um, CCing, you know, the council and um, critiquing the decisions that the council is making. Um, because we have another opportunity here to, again, go forward and ask for funds for our sector. Um, and it has to feel to government like that investment is worthwhile, that it's building capacity um, that the policy pieces and the refinement of a rollout is really between the agency and its clients um, and not highly politicized. So um, I think we have a phenomenal opportunity. When governments make this kind of investment, they do need to know that sectors um, see it as valuable <laughs> and work with it. Um, and I think, Simone, you end up having to make that um, sort of appeal to us. Well, we mm. as a sector... Uh, need to work together so you don't have to defend yourself <laughs> around the value of these investments. Um, we actually defend the money, um, refine how it's flowing, and then work very hard with you, as we did with the tri-councils as universities, to get more money in the system. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I must say, you know, I'm attending, and I will, as you know, you had a, a report here, you know, there, there are constantly, you know, uh, Commission of the Senate, Parliament, you know, we have to go in front of the Parliament. Sometimes I'm, I'm there and just before me is a group of a NASO or... I just want to say, and, you know, this year, you know, we invested, uh, you know, close to seven million to give a, a, a voice to indigenous organizations and organization of diversity. I only saw and I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to Twitter and, and Instagram, <laughs> and people who know me know that. I only saw one institution in the country, I won't mention it, they know who they are, one institution in the country who said, Great Canada Council, you gave a voice to the people in my community who needed it. One. And I can't believe that. You know, if we want to advance reconciliation, if we want to advance diversity, applaud when people mm -hmm. get money mm -hmm. and did not get that money for years and decades. Applaud, say that you care about that, that you're happy, on the, and, and not say, oh, when is my time to have my mm -hmm. money? 
And, and if we don't learn to do that, we will not succeed. We won't succeed. When I was in Montreal, when I was on the other side of the fence with Culture Montreal, we worked years and years to build that capacity of solidarity, that capacity for being happy for the others who finally had money. You know, as a citizens, we, we all, you know, care. You know, when we learn that, okay, there will be running mo- water in a reserve, we care. And it's more important than, than fixing the sidewalk on my street. But, but we need to say it, because if we don't say it, the, the mentality or the vision that the politicians uh, have that we are just, you know, uh, un panier de crabe, you know, that anyway, you know, they all, always fight against, among themselves and all that, will remain. And divided, we won't go anywhere. United, we can, we can make a long road. Absolutely. <laughs> I think this is a wonderful place to, uh, to conclude the session. Thank so you. thank you so thank much, you. Simon thank and you, Carolyn. Thank you. And uh, thank you to uh, everyone here and on the live stream. <laughs> <You see? laughs>